without the CTA and without our, our local education associations, I think that we would spend a lot more time worrying about our retirement and our medical benefits. And um, if we if if those were on our mind all the time, how effective would be we be as a teacher? I mean, so when you go home, you're thinking about great lesson plans, what you can do to engage the students tomorrow. You don't need to be thinking about whether your retirement's going to be taken away. So what were we talking about? Uh, unionism. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, and it's the, and it's that fact. They, they, the unions are a security blanket. I mean, sure, we need to be we need to be activists, and we need to when issues arise and changes need to happen, we need to be part of that union. But for the most part, um, the CTA and the local education associations they allow us to teach. Um, we don't, you know, they they set those protections um, for us that we know we can walk in our classroom and. We can be creative. We can step outside the box. Um, they allow us to um, to try things um, in our classroom because we know that that create creativity is not stifled. Um, then they they also allow us to enjoy a career and have you know post career expectations. Um, and so that's that's a, a big thing for us. And I think even taking it a step, you know even out of the classroom, uh, CTA and union representatives, if there's something uh, awry, you know, let's say even on the campus, if there's in fact a danger, if there's a danger situation, well, let's say, you know, um, slippage where students are getting injured or what have you, you could go to your union rep and as a voice of your, you know, union and make these, you know, changes and you know, group, groups of teachers getting together and making changes, whether it be a bell schedule, whether it be anything like that, or um, an administrator or somebody you know, in the district that may be causing you some grief or whatever the situation is, now you have a body to go to. You have a body that will listen. And you know, you know, they're the go-to person. And that's what I really count on our union you know, people to. We as a group, sure, but that person is the spokesperson for 37 other teachers that will represent us, and we have that strong voice. So that's why I'm so, you know, <clears throat> in regards to the union, how I feel so strongly about what they represent, and they represent my voice, and I think that's huge. Well, I have a concern, too, that I don't think that teachers are necessarily treated as professionals. I think, you know, there's that, you know, if you can't do anything else, you teach. You know, what can you do? What do you, you know, what do you do? And I think that, you know, gaining respect as a, as a profession is huge. And I think, you know, in addition to, you know, the support and, and matters legally and so on and so forth, I think having a voice as, as a professional um, is important because we need to change we need to change the way that the communities look at us we are not the union we are your community's teachers you know we are your children's teachers you know trust us you know listen to what we're saying treat us as a professional much as you would your doctors and and so on and so forth um, and and I think that that that's not that's not always the case I want to run with that a little bit because in the arts, particularly in the performance arts, hmm. uh, when, you're, when you're in your training as an undergraduate and in graduate school, you choose a track and it's either going to be performance or teaching. And, um, and certainly for my generation of musicians, if you went on into that teaching track, you were viewed as a second class citizen that you weren't as good as the other folks because those folks would be in performance. And I remember my first year just being at the bottom of the pile because I had such a lack of preparation for my degree. And by my fourth year, I had risen to the top of the pile mm -hmm. because I had really honed my skills as a teacher. And this idea of our, our union really professionalizing us, making us look as professional and being treated as professional as possible. I think that's one of the most important things the union does for us, particularly as a, as a music teacher. Because 
let's face it, so many schools have cut their arts programs mm -hmm. and cut their music programs. And so for a community like my community to step forward and say, no, we're not going to do that. We value the arts. And we value you as a teacher. And then for the union to stand by that and, and truly say, yes, you will not take this program away. We want you to keep it. Uh, that's, I think, one of the most valuable things that I think arts teachers benefit from with regard to the union. Well, I think that the connected educator is the empowered educator. And for me, my personal learning network really comes down to a lot of folks who are also part of the union and, and part of active representation. And I think that those conversations and the relevancy to my professional practice really comes from just interacting with other really outstanding professionals. I know, you know, CTA has been doing the quality teaching conferences and, and they just, um, we sent a whole bunch of people from my district and I just sat down with them and, and heard some of the great things that they were learning at the South Conference. And, and I think that that's sort of equal, equal measure to the representation is just this idea that we're developing right. together as a group of professionals to more effectively practice our craft. I think it goes back to it takes a village, you know, mm -hmm. that that we can seek each other out for help and support. We are our own professional development, you know. All we need to do is take advantage of the professionals that are by, you know, in the trenches, so to speak, you know, each and every day. And there's one more thing I want to say about the union that I think is really, I think, so relevant today is that in the early days of unions, I think it was all very reactionary in how to as to how people were being treated, and then the, the union would then react to that. But now what the union does is that they're very proactive. And that's, I think, one of the best benefits that we receive from the union, particularly our younger teachers. When we get professional development, when the magazine pr puts forth ideas and very specific practices to help all of us, I, that's the union I love because it's not about being reactionary. It's about being, it's about leading and what can developing. What I do in the classroom? What can I do tomorrow? That's right. Oh yeah, woo, woo, let's do it. I can do it. Start tomorrow. I'm doing That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And the union magazine, you know, CTA magazine. Um, I'm a dedicated reader. There are so many. You know, it it uh, informs you about you know laws that are being presented. It informs you about which stance you know, gives you an option. This is the pros, this is the cons. Uh, addressing Common Core, addressing, you know, the pros and cons as Common Core. Uh, you know, so I really take it as a professional, uh, again, uh, proponent unionism to our profession. And without it, I think we would be lacking in many areas without that representation, that foresight, if you will, and the projection of what's going on in education. So I, you know, I think it's uh, well endorsed as far as. To be led by, by someone like Dean. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 See again, I'm the dancer. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, you know, there's the wow moment. 